Welcome to Canvas Coder and today we will do some cool stuff. ARM32 Linux Assembler. Motherfucker! So the last week I bought an Apple M1, tested it, sent it back. It's, it's not a winner. Although the ARM CPU is awesome. So I did some ARM64 assembler on that. A hello world and an uppercase and I figured why not do that? First in ARM32, then I will upgrade my Pi and do another video with ARM64. Let's dive in. So today we will be coding this. If you don't know C, no worries, because we're just going to do assembler. But basically what this does is it takes this string, it says it's 28 characters long, the whole string, and it writes it to file descriptor 1. File descriptor 1 is the standard out. Of course, the source code is already here. So if you want to have a breeze through, link in the description. But let us build this from the command line in VI. And I explain as we go on. I will omit the remarks because that would take too long. You know me with typing. So there is a Raspberry Pi here, uh, 27 I believe it was, yes, VI hello world the S, okay, now first and foremost we must instruct the assembler to tell it that this is a code segment, so got text, that is the code segment, then we need to tell it the end to handle, uh, we first align it, just to be sure. ARM CPUs have a fixed length of instructions and certain kernels really demand it to start on an even boundary. A dot align with an even number, we could have used two, will align the code to be on an even boundary line. But four is more sensical because it's 32 bits, so we align it on a 32 bit boundary here. Then we say you can find the global start at the label underscore start. Right, so we now need some data and we call it string. And we say the string is an ASCII string and we say hello world arm CPUs rule right i totally agree with that now we need the length we could count them like i did in uh, c but we can also use a compiler directive we will make a variable called length and that is the current address minus the string address so for example, this is at address zero for all intents and purposes. It is 28 characters long. So len will start at 28. So 28 minus zero is 28. Hence, it will calculate it automatically. So if we change this string and we recompile it, it will just work. Now in Linux, there is an agreement, I believe it was called the AAPCS, that the parameters start at R0, or if you are working on 64-bit X0, up to X7, those are parameters. Beyond that, you will need to go on the stack. Now luckily, the right has three parameters, the file descriptor, the pointer to the string and the length of the string. So we first start by R0. R0 is a 32-bit register on ARM32. On ARM64 it's called X0. That's a 64-bit register and if you want the 32 lower bits of it it's called W0. Unlike Intel it doesn't have the higher uh, 32 bits addressing. So R0 is the file descriptor, so let us first write what we're going to do. We will be doing write, file descriptor, string, and then all. 
Now we need to do a load because move only does direct loading of the registers. LDR, load, uh, loads from memory. Now we read where the pointer of string is located. We do that with the LDR, load register. And it has to go in R1, equal sign, and then the label where it starts. That's it. And uh, now we have to load the length, the same thing, load R2 equals len. So now we have in R0 the FD, in R1 we have the pointer to the string, and in R2 we have the length. That's nice, that is cool. And now we have to load in register 7 the value of the system call. So since we that's an immediate assignment, hashtag immediate, there we go. And then we need to call the system call. You can either do software interrupt, SWI or service. I prefer service, but they do the same thing. Right, so this is going to print, but as soon as we print, the code will continue to execute and execute this or whatever is beyond that and it will crash horribly so we also have to close it. We will use the exit syscall for that and this is what we will be doing. So again we will move our zero in this case with the value zero because we want exit code zero. So you may wonder where can I find all these syscall numbers and that's a very valid question. You can get them out of the Linux uh, source code in syscall.h, but there is an easier resource. Source sm sourceforts.net syscall.html. Yep. Another good open source product. And here we see exit is syscall1 and write is syscall4. And as you can see, these are the arguments. And we only have one argument in exit. Now we come to the big part that is compiling it. And compiling it is a bit tricky because we need to make a make file. So obviously you need to have your build tools installed as well. So we want to create the hello world uh, binary. And that requires the input of a hello world.object file. And we link that with minus s minus o hello world. That is the output that we want. And the input is hello world. Oh! And then we need to tell how we compile it. That we need to create a hello world.o file. And that comes from the uh, hello world.s file, and that is s. Uh, it's just minus o. Uh, hello world.o, hello world.o, and it comes from the hello world.s file. And let's make it clean as well. Around star.o rm hello world <laughs> in one go that doesn't happen often let's see if it crashes horrendously uh, apparently it does because we expect an output here so something is wrong and that's the cool thing of unscripted videos you get it all we set the output to uh, 1, that's the standard. We load R1 with the string, we load R2 with the string, and we set R7. Oh, it needs to be 4, standard out. And there we go, your first Hello World on Assembler. So that is as simple as it gets, really. So a quick run through what we did. So we first looked up the syscall for system write, which is system call 4, and it takes three arguments. As I explained to you, the arguments come in 
R0, R1, R2, R3, R4, R5, R6. And R7 contains the system call number. So R0 is the file descriptor. We set that to 1. That is standard out. We load the address where the string is. That is our address pointer. We load the length of the string from memory. That is calculated here on compile time. We then set R0 to syscall 4, not 7, what I did wrong initially, and then call the service 0, that is the syscall on Linux, on Linux ARM, let me put it that way, because I believe on Intel it's 80, but I could be wrong. And then we do the same for the exit, we say exit is syscall 1, syscall 1, and we want the exit status to be 0, so we lock load our zero with zero and we call service zero and boom it's done so that is arm assembly 32 hello world i hope you like this episode and i'll see you in the next one